Today, you're gonna learn about a powerful concept that must be present in every negotiation. And you're gonna learn it with none other than Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders. It says that, here, here, that 100% of your business goes to me. I see. That's funny, that is. What? Nah, no, that's funny. I'll give you 100% of my business. Yeah. Why? As you saw in the preview scene, Alfie is asking for 100% of Tommy's business. Now let's see how Tommy handles the situation. But before we get started, each week we create lessons like this one to help intermediate and advanced learners like you improve your English in a fun and dynamic way, without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without needing subtitles. So if you're new here, make sure that you join our community of over 5 million learners by hitting that subscribe button and bell down below so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. Get on with it. Well, I have an associate waiting for me at the door. I know he looks like a quiet boy, but he is actually an anarchist from Kentish Town. When I came in here, Mr. Solomons, I stopped to tie my shoelace. And while I was doing it, I laid a hand grenade on one of your barrels. Good. Get on with it. You can tell someone to get on with it when you want to urge the person to do or say something. It gives the idea that you don't have all day to wait and you want the person to do something now or get to the point. Beautiful young bride you've chosen. When were you planning on getting married? Just get on with it. On with what? What you're here for. There's no way this little visit could possibly mean anything good for me. It's very good for you. Well, I have an associate waiting for me at the door. The word associate can be used to refer to a business partner or someone who works with you. Within the context of organized crime, an associate is usually someone who holds a lower position and works for the leader of the organization. This is Romeo Parada. Roche, pleasure to meet you. My associate, Luis Torres. What about about you, sir? I know he looks like a quiet boy, but he is actually an anarchist from Kentish Town. A choir is a group of people who sing together in churches and public events. Notice how Tommy pronounces the word. The ch has a k sound. We also hear a w sound followed by an i sound. Choir. Since Tommy is British, he doesn't pronounce the r at the end. Choir. If you'll indulge me. Now what? Choir practice. Choir practice. Now, when I came in here, Mr. Solomons, I stopped to tie my shoelace. A shoelace or shoestring is a thin string of cloth or leather used to fasten shoes. To tie your shoelace means to fasten it. The opposite of tie is untie. Look, it's easy, okay? Here's what you do. You untie your shoelace and you head toward the restaurant. As you're walking past the car, you look down, oh, hey, Don, my shoe's untied. Okay. Now, when you, when you, when you bend down to tie your shoe, you um, stick this up into the wheel well. Mark 15 with wire trip. And my friend upstairs, well, he's like one of those anarchists that uh, they blew up Wall Street, you know. He's a professional and he's in charge of the wire. If I don't walk out that door with a stroke of seven, he's gonna trigger the grenade and your very combustible rum will blow us all to hell. Mark 15 with wire trip. 
Mark 15 or number 15 is a type of grenade used by the British during World War I. Wired trip or trip wire is a wire or cord that is attached to some devices to detect physical movement. If attached to a mine, bomb or grenade, it is used to trigger or activate the explosion. It's gonna be okay, okay. It's counting down even faster! It's a tripwire. There might be a system override on the dead man's switch. A, a pin connected to a chain that slides underneath the hole that goes underneath the trigger. Well, he's like one of those anarchists that uh, they blew up Wall Street, you know. Which one of these options is a synonym for blow up? A. Break. B. Explode. C. Shatter. To blow up means to bomb or explode. This is a phrasal verb. This is a zero-sum game, except the truth. That building is going to blow up and there's not a damn thing you can do to stop. However, you can use the word blow to say that something is of bad quality or not good. Oh, 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 Shikuru, my, oh, my, he's a demon samurai. Who's the guy who had to die? Oh, Shikuru. Boy, that really blows. <laughs> Excuse me? If I don't walk out that door with a stroke of seven. Old analog clocks have a stroke mechanism, which means that there is a clock stroke or sound to indicate that another hour has passed. The phrase on the stroke of seven means exactly at seven. I'm saying the Disneyfication of New York is over, everyone. At the stroke of midnight, your Lexus is gonna turn back into a hot pile of rats fighting over a human finger. He's gonna trigger the grenade and... To trigger means to activate. Tommy is saying that his associate will activate the grenade. However, this word can also be used to talk about the cause of something. Soon we'll be approached by people who haven't prepared. Now do not look at their faces. That can trigger feelings and emotions which have no place in Civilization 2.0. Tommy uses leverage here. Leverage means how much bargaining power a person has. It has to do with someone's ability to influence the other party and move the negotiation closer to the desired result. If one side has more to lose, it has less leverage than the other side that has least to lose. Within the context of negotiations, the person who has the most leverage usually wins. Let's keep watching to see what happens. I bet 100 to 1 you will fucking lie in, mate. That's my money. We see you failed to consider the form. I did blow up my own pub. For the insurance. Okay, right, well, considering the full, I would say 65 to 1. Very good odds. And I would be more than happy and agree if you decide over 65% of your business to me. Thank you. 65. No deal. I bet 100 to 1. You're fucking lying, mate. When you say, I bet, you mean that you're certain about what you're saying, even to the point of risking your own money to prove that you're right. It's just weird. We had such a great time last night. I bet he's busy. He's a weatherman in Southern California. He has to be ready in case temperatures plunge below 70 degrees. Mate is an informal way to say friend. This word is very common in British English. In the US, you usually hear pal or buddy instead. Oh, what a good name. <laughs> Go with Joey. Joey's your pal. Joey's your buddy. Where is everybody? Well, they're hanging out with Joey. <laughs> when learning a new language, it can be a huge challenge to figure out which words and expressions are important and which ones you will never need. Without the guidance of a good teacher, you may waste a lot of time learning the wrong ones. But don't worry, because with our Fluent with Friends course, you will learn the words and expressions that native speakers actually use every day. Plus, you'll have a ton of fun doing so with the TV series Friends, which various studies have proven is the best show to learn English. 
In this course, you will learn how native speakers reduce, cut and connect sounds, which is the secret to understanding us no matter how fast we speak. Plus, you'll get to laugh at all the jokes. You can give it a try now for free with our three-part masterclass. What are you waiting for? Simply click up here or down in the description box below to sign up now. That's my money. When Alfie says, that's my money, he means that's what I think or that's my guess. Since he said, I bet, before, it makes sense that he would say this. I did blow up me on poop. One of the great things about watching Peaky Blinders is that you get to listen to other types of British accents. The story is set in Birmingham, England and the Shelby family is of Irish Romani origin. Instead of saying, I did blow up my own pub, Tommy says, me pub instead of my pub. This change is common in some regions of England, especially in central and northern England. Go. My lord. No born girls say my lord, not my lord. If you're going to pose as a commoner, you should do it properly. I did blow up my own pub. And insurance. Insurance company pay you a set amount of money in case of accidents, diseases and calamities. There are all kinds of insurance a person can have. Life insurance, health insurance, car insurance, house insurance. Tommy is probably referring to the kind of insurance that protects properties. In case there's a fire or natural disaster that destroys the property, the insurance company will pay for the damage. Tommy is saying that he blew up his own pub just to get the money from the insurance company. Look out! Oh, that's just perfect. Uh, you got insurance. I would say 65 to 1. Very good odds. When you give odds, you talk about the probability of something happening or how likely something is true or not. Alfie started by saying that there was a 100 to 1 probability that Tommy was lying about the grenade. Now, after hearing what happened to Tommy's pub, he is dropping the odds to 65 to 1. A common question is, what are the odds? You can use it to express surprise, especially when talking about something unlikely to happen, but that happens anyway. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Two in a row! You gotta use your tongues now! say no deal during a negotiation, you don't accept the other party's proposal. However, if you say deal, that means you agree with the proposed terms. During a negotiation, it's also common to ask the question, do we have a deal? After you propose your terms. Do we have a deal? If I don't hear from you within 10 days, I will spend the last seven months in this office making your life as miserable as the law allows. Took out the pin and put it on the wire. Based on this, 45%. 30. Oh, fuck off, Tommy. That's far too little. Took out the pin and put it on the wire. Grenades usually have a pin, a thin piece of metal that when removed, it sets the grenade to detonate. Pull the pin out and remove the grenade. Uh, uh, you pull out the pin and I will pull out the grenade. Okay. Can I say one? 30. Oh, fuck off, Tommy. That's far too little. If you 
you tell someone to fuck off, you're telling the person to leave in a rude way. Keep in mind, this is very offensive. That's kind of dangerous. You want to move it up onto the sidewalk away from the traffic? My dad says you're a joke and I don't have to listen to you. Well, your father is entitled to his opinion, but I am an officer of the law and uh, by all rights I could... Uh... Fuck off! You should watch your mouth, little girl. In the end, Tommy is successful in moving the negotiation to his desired result. Let's see what they decide. Listen, I'll give you 35%. 35? It is interesting to see how Alfie started by asking for 100% of Tommy's business, and by the end of the conversation, they agreed on 35%, which is only 5% more than what Tommy had in mind. Tommy was able to succeed because he leveraged the grenade story to scare Alfie. Since Alfie wasn't sure if Tommy was telling the truth or not, he didn't want to risk his own life by possibly being blown up by Tommy's grenade. Notice that in the beginning of the clip, Alfie had more leverage because he was threatening to shoot Tommy if he didn't agree to his terms. However, throughout the conversation, we can see the leverage shifting to Tommy's side little by little. Alfie kept reducing the percentage he was asking for until they reached an agreement of 35%. Mark 15 with wired trip. And my friend upstairs, well, he's like one of those anarchists that uh, they blew up Wall Street, you know? And he's in charge of the wire. If I don't walk out that door with a stroke of seven, He's going to trigger the grenade and... To trigger here means A. Find B. Activate C. Set up I bet 100 to 1 that you're fucking lying, mate. That's my money. We see you fail to consider the form. I did blow up my own pub. Insurance. Okay, right, well, we'll consider in the form. Which of these is not insurance? Car and house, life and health, ice cream and beer. That's my money. I well, see you fail to consider the form. I did blow up my own pub. For the insurance. Okay, right, well, we'll consider in the form. I would say 65 to 1, very good odds. And I would be more than happy and agree for you to sign over 65% of your business to me. Thank you. 65, no deal. Which option best defines the phrase no deal? A, you have to check the terms. B, you're not sure if you agree with the terms. C, you don't agree with the terms. What if I told you that you can learn thousands of words in English with just one trick? You heard me right. This is a concept that can dramatically improve your vocabulary as well as make you sound more advanced. Curious? Well then check out this lesson next. Advanced word formation. I love my grandma. She's very wise. <laughs> Intermediate. What? No. No. Advanced word formation. I love my grandma. She's very wise. Intermediate. 